if there's some ghastly thing that's going to happen to you and your loved ones in the probably relatively distant future, then you're not going to want to spend your miserably short life being preoccupied by this terrible thing. What you're going to want to do is find some way to put it out of your mind and, you know, get on with it and make the best of what you've got. And um, it doesn't matter how you put it out of your mind, how irrational your rationalization is. And so I come across the most utterly laughable, tragic arguments that people give for saying aging is actually a good thing or it doesn't matter or whatever. Um, but ultimately, I don't exactly ridicule these people at all. I really sympathize with that kind of thinking. It's just that now it's out of date. It's only become out of date in the past 10 or 15 years since we've got a plan for actually bringing aging under medical control. And that plan has a respectable chance of delivering within the foreseeable future in time for lots and lots of people who are already alive today. Um, but now that, that is the case, this irrationality is a huge part of the problem. It's undoubtedly slowing things down a lot and costing us a lot of lives. Right, and as humans, it's fascinating because I was watching your TED Talk and you say it's the most important uh, problem in the world and I'm like, yes, it is because I'm watching you and you, you quote the figures like 100,000 people die every day you know, from, from age-related issues and that's twice as big as the next biggest killer mm -hmm. and in the developed world, it, world it's 90% of the, of the cause of death and so you're like, as, but as humans, I know that we just naturally avoid certain things that we don't like and subconsciously we make these decisions and aging and dying from old age is something that mm. is ultra, it's, it's one of our greatest fears, isn't it? One thing I want to actually emphasize really at the outset here is that the death aspect is really not the main thing I want to emphasize in terms of the suffering. Because yeah, death is bad, people you know mourn about people who've died, but the fact is in general, Aging causes people to go downhill for a long time. So when you're in a really bad state of health, a lot of people will say, well, you know, death isn't such a bad thing. But of course, that's not the point. The point here is to stop people from going downhill in the first place. So the longevity benefits that we may experience, that we may benefit from, as a result of these therapies that I and my colleagues are trying to deliver, are a side effect. They are a side benefit of the health benefits. Since being sick is the main risk factor for dying, it stands to reason that if you can stop people from getting sick, then they're going to live longer on average. And if you can't stop people from getting sick, then they're not going to live longer on average. So nobody has any right to worry about the possibility that we will substantially extend people's ill health that we will keep people alive for a long time in the state of health that is typical of today's elderly. What we will do is we will, yes, we will have people living longer, but that will be because they're staying healthy longer. Right. And you talk about it.